Greetings friends and welcome to Let's Make a 2D Fighter Part 10. In this video I'm going to show you how to add a block function to your game. Now there's a few different ways of blocking. Uh, the way that I like to do it is to do it with an actual button. So in some games like Street Fighter for example, all you do is press back and then you'll automatically block. But I like to um, do it with an actual button press and I'm going to make that uh, L1 and when you do that you're going to activate the block animation and then I'm going to show you how to have two different kinds of blocks the first one is going to be one that completely reduces all the damage you take so in other words when you block you can't take any damage and then there's another one which will uh, kind of think of it as a just a damage reduction block so when you get attacked it'll reduce damage by let's say 50% or or 80% or whatever it might be alrighty so let's get stuck in First things first, we're going to just add in a new animation. We'll get rid of the old guy, and we will make ourselves a nice block animation. So, I'm going to go into Gadgets, Logic and Processing, and then get a nice microchip. We can just pop it down over here. We can make it blue if we like. Block is blue. Beautiful. Then we can name that Block or defend or whatever you like. Now that we've got our block microchip, we're going to go into animate, choose ourselves a keyframe, and while recording on this keyframe, we're going to do ourselves a nice little block pose. So we might move the arms up as if they were guarding the old the old head. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I just want to make a few adjustments here. I want to like bend them over a little bit. Just be aware that it, that might do a little bit something funky with the arms there. Oh wow, something very funky with the arms. Okay, I'm just going to deanimate there. And here we are. They might want to, you know, duck their head down or something like that. They're protecting their face. Lower their posture ever so slightly whatever works for you then in this keyframe we're going to go slow power up make it uh, let's say 0.3 seconds and slow power down and this block will be powered by a very simple button press of the old here we are controller sensor page one l1 button alrighty now let's see what happens round one fight I'm going to press L1 and I go into my block pose. I can block while I'm moving and so on and so forth. If you want to make it that you cannot move while you block, that's a really easy thing to do. All you do is go into animate, get yourself a keyframe, go into your particular puppet and set their walk speed to zero or run speed or whatever you've got. Line that up nicely and you can connect that to L1. So for as long as it's pressed, you're going to be blocking. You can actually call this one block animation. Or block pose. And this one will be... Immobilize. Alrighty. So now for as long as you press block, you're not going to be able to move. You cancel jump if you like. You cancel crouch. And in fact, if we we're gonna we're gonna optimize things for when we press crouch, actually, in a future video. Just kidding. We're actually gonna do that right now. So in order to optimize it for your crouch, we need to make it so that this block is only going to be uh, affected, or it's only going to work when down isn't pressed as well. If down is also pressed as well as the block button, then what's going to happen is we're going to do a crouch block. So I think first we'll do our crouch block um, pose. So we'll just copy our crouch and we'll see what it looks like okay it looks pretty good and then we'll just move the hands up and make it a kind of a crouch block all righty tighty looks to be pretty good 
and this is going to be our crouch block. Now we're going to throw in some AND gates. So we'll extend the side a little bit here. Now, let's go into gadgets, find ourselves an AND gate. And we're going to make it so that when L1, which is our block button, is pressed, AND down on the D-pad is pressed, whoops, sorry, connected that to the wrong port, AND down on the D-pad is pressed, so when these are pressed together, it's going to do our crouch block. So when the block button and the crouch button are pressed together, it's going to do the crouch block. Then, for our normal block, we're also actually going to use an AND gate, but we're also going to add in a little NOT gate. Can you guess what it's going to be? So when we press L1, and when down on the D-pad is NOT pressed, then we're, we're going to do a normal block. So I deleted that original connection between L1 and the block pose. And now it has to be that when L1 is not pressed, I'll quickly go into test mode and we can see what's happening. So I'll go modes, test mode. I'll possess a little puppy. Round one, fight. So if I press down, I'm going to crouch. If I press L1, I'm going to block. As you can see, down is not being pressed. But if I press down and L1, you'll see that if you look at the bottom one, down is pressed, you see the B starts to highlight, and then L1 is pressed, and I will now do a crouch block. Okay, sweet, I hope that makes sense, friends. If you find that your puppet's head is moving around when you play and it's been kind of annoying, then what you'll want to do is actually delete, delete the connection, if we look over here, between the motion sensor and the lean. I should have actually done this in the first video when I was doing movement, and I'm sorry I haven't. It's kind of annoying. But you can delete it, and then round you, one. Move your controller. Fight. Your character's head's not going to move around annoyingly because by default it'll do that. Okay, but here we have a block, crouch block, even a jumping block. Alrighty. So now that we've got the animation out of the way and the the control scheme, I'm going to show you how to do the two different kinds of block. One is the perfect block, which takes no damage or lets no damage through, and one is the damage reduction block. You can choose whichever one works for your game as you see fit. Alrighty, so the first important thing that you've got to do is go to all of your various things that deal damage. So for example, your punches. And in your health modifiers, you've got to make sure that they are consistent. And what we're going to do is, we're going to make it so that they only affect foe. A quick way to do this is to actually open all the things that have your health modifiers in. You can select them all with X. Then pre select one of them with L1 and square and make it so that only foe is highlighted. So in other words, this is only going to deal damage to foe. And if we look at all our other ones, we're going to see that yes, it only does damage to foe. And now you can do this with the rest of your health modifiers. Okay, friends, so I've just completed the damage modifier or the health modifier modifications that I needed to do, making sure all the labels are consistent. Make sure that you don't forget about your fireball, but you could actually make it that your fireball does damage to both friend and foe, and in that way you can actually get hit by your own fireball um, if you shoot it and then like jump into it somehow. You can get hit by your own fireball, which I think is cool, but otherwise you can just uh, modify it as you need. So now what we're going to do is kind of, it is kind of a painstaking thing, but we're going to make it so that when we've got player two settings, one of the things that it's going to do is actually modify our health modifier so that it doesn't deal damage to foe, but instead deals damage to friend. 
So this is kind of a laborious process and it's you kind of just do it for everything. I won't show you me doing it all over and over again because that's pretty much all you have to do. So just to go over it once again, you go into the health modifier, you don't make it foe, you make it friend. So in other words, player 2 deals damage to friend. Okay, sweet. I'm just going to fast forward this next bit. Okay friends, so now we've just completed those modifications and we are going to turn preview invisibility back on. Then we can copy this guy. And now that we've got that consistent, let's Round one. play through. Fight! Right, I'm playing as player two and it looks like we can deal damage. KO! And the KO logic works too. Round Fungus. two. Okay, friends, so now we have those various modifications consistent so that when we have our character being player one, they are going to be dealing damage to foe, and when they are player two, they're going to deal damage to friend. If you have questions about the player one or player two and how to differentiate between them, be sure to check out part seven where I talk about uh, player one and player two differentiating between them righty now the next thing we're going to do is go back into our block logic and we're going to add in a little tag so gadgets senses and input and tag and this tag is going to be called block righty and not only are we going to have a little tag, we're also going to have a trigger zone. And this trigger zone is going to detect a tag, and it's going to detect block. And now, we can move the trigger zone so that it's in front of us. And we can also make it so that the tag itself is kind of near the center of our body. So when we block, so essentially what's happening is, when we block, we're going to get a block tag that appears by us. It's also okay if we detect our own block tag because you won't be able to attack and block at the same time. If you want to make sure that you can't attack and block at the same time, go to your immobilize keyframe and in it you can deactivate punches and kicks. So in other words, while you're holding block you can't punch and you can't kick. Alrighty, sweet. So now what's going to happen is when block is detected it is going to do, it's going to activate a keyframe. And now here are the two different kinds of block you can do. You can make it so that damage is fully reduced or damage is reduced by only a certain amount. So what we'll do is we'll go to our light punch and we'll go to our health modifier and we shall simply reduce the amount of damage it deals. So if we want to make it a complete block, like a perfect block, we'll reduce that to zero. If we want to make it a, a block that just reduces damage, then we can go like, alrighty and make it just two damage or so. So those are the kind of the two types. They're not really a, a huge difference between types there actually. It's just whether you want to make it a complete block or one that's just a partial block. Okay, sweet. And then we shall make it like this. And once again, this is another laborious process because you have to go with this keyframe, which we can call block damage block DMG reduction or reducer if you like so block damage reducer what you have to do is record a keyframe and go into each of these particular health modifiers and reduce the amount of damage that they do alrighty and so on and so forth so let's just do all the punches so we can see that this works We'll make them all go from 10 damage to a mere 2. Alrighty. Now let's see if this works. 
Actually, friends, before we do that, we've got to make one final adjustment, which is that we've got to make the block tag turned off by default. Because if it's not turned off by default, then the block effect is actually always going to be taking effect. We want to make it so that it's only turned on when our block pose is actually active. So we'll go to the block pose keyframe, and then we'll turn on this tag. And then we shall do the same for our crouch block. Perfect. And it's going to reduce our own damage, but that doesn't matter because we can't attack at the same time that we block. Alrighty. So now let us see how this works. Round one. Fight! So I'll go up to this guy. Punch. You can see that did a lot of damage. Now he blocks. And we can see that it is a reduced amount. Punch, 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 punch. Punch, 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 punch. K.O. Okay, sweet. So friends, Round that's all two. there is to it. Fight! The next step is um, really just uh, nothing fancy. It's pretty much just the laborious process of going with the block damage reducer and going to each of your various attacks, going to the health modifiers of each of them, and then reducing the amount of damage that they deal. So yeah, friends, it is a little bit of a laborious process, and I won't, uh, I won't go through everything with you. I'll do it once more, so we will go and just reduce the damage. But yes, friends, so you must uh, just go to each of your attacks. I'm not sure which ones you'll have, and just uh, make the necessary changes there. And friends, we must also remember that we need to do our fireball, or our super attack. So what we'll do is we'll go into show and hide. Turn off preview and visibility and we can see that we've got a fireball over here. Now it works ever so slightly differently with our fireball or our Hadouken or whatever our special moves are. Because it's not simply enough to go into your block logic and to go to your uh, keyframe and then to go into your fire blast logic and to change the health modifier's value. You can't, for example, just change it here. And why, why do you ask? Because if a fireball's already been emitted and you change the this value here it's going to change the original value but it's already shooting out a fireball and it's not going to work and generally using keyframes to change the value of a fireball or sorry an emitted object just is it doesn't always work so what we have to do is we actually have to create an element of the fireball logic which is outside of the actual thing itself and what we're going to do is we're going to go to gadgets then we're going to go to, whoops, all the way to the end here, value slider. And this value slider, we can call something like super, super damage, super DMG. And we'll just have it from 0 to 1, and we'll set it on 1 by default. Then we'll connect it to a health modifier. We'll scope into it and connect it to the left side of the input for modification amount. So now it's going to do 1 times 20, so it's going to do 20 damage. Sweet. Then we're going to make it so that when you're blocking right, the block damage reducer is going to reduce the amount of damage, or rather the super damage, to 0 0.2. So what it means is, it's only going to deal 0 0.2 times 20, which is of course equal to 4. Another way of thinking about this is it reduces the amount of damage um, that is dealt by 80%, or in other words, you only deal 20% of your damage. You can actually use a system like this where you've got a value slider, and you can have just your normal physical attacks, and that way you can make it so that you can connect it to all of the, um, all of the ports, all of the inputs for the modification amounts of all your health modifiers, and you can say that, for example, all damage is reduced by 80%, or all damage is reduced by half, or it's reduced to zero, for example. So this is another way you can do it. If you do each one manually, as we have done, that is a lot more painstaking, but you also have a lot more control. So you could be like, okay, maybe a little, a little kick's only going to deal 20% of its damage, but maybe a heavy punch will actually deal half of its damage. So you can adjust as you see fit. But uh, really, that depends on you. This is quite a nice system because if you change your mind halfway, you can just adjust. You can just go to this and be like, okay, actually, I want it to only deal, reduce it by half, for example. But that's totally up to you. And you can have a lot of fun with that.
Okay, now the next thing that you've got to change is you've got to close all of this business and go into your particular puppet, go into the super move, and then when you go into the uh, Fire Blast or Hadouken or whatever your super move is, in the emitter, it's very important that you go to inputs and outputs and you tick or you highlight emit with wires. Why is this important? Because the way that the fireball works, right, when it's emitted, all of this internal logic is only sort of in effect before it's emitted. Once it's been emitted, then the stuff is static and it can't be changed, right? So if you change things with a keyframe, it's not going to do anything. It might change it for the next one that's emitted, but the one that is currently emitted, any changes that you make will not have any effect. Unless, of course, you emit it with wires. That means that every single one that is emitted is going to be connected to whatever it is connected um, to with wires. Uh, if you emit it without wires, then it'll just shoot off and it'll have no connection to this. But if you emit it with wires, that means it'll maintain the connection with super damage. And if you adjust this, it's going to change the value of this. So essentially, emitting with wires allows us to make a change to something that is emitted. Because emitted objects are normally impossible to um, adjust while they are being emitted. So there you are, that's a little bit of a pro tip for you there. Now let's delete this dude. And let's see... If we're going to work here. Round one. Fight. Okay, now we're going to block and... So that was reduced. But now another thing that I need to do is... We can see that the damage has been reduced there. So normal one. Gzz, a lot of damage. Blocked one. Gzz. So I block the damage, but the animation is just not, not playing the game. So what we're going to do is... We're going to go into our block... And we're going to go and make it so that with our block pose, right? With our block pose, we're going to go into hit reactions and deactivate the trigger zone super hit body. So this super hit body is the one that detects if you've been hit by a fireball. If you've been hit by a fireball, you're going to do that fall over animation. But we don't want that to happen. So what we'll do is we'll go into it and turn it off. Make sure that you not only do that for the block pose, but also for the crouch block pose. And you disable this trigger zone. Now, if we have a squiz, get to this old dude, put in the new guy. Round one, fight! We block and we shoot. As you can see, I'm getting hit, I'm taking some damage, but I'm not falling over. So there you are, friends. Right, we can turn this off now, show and hide, and we pretty much just have ourselves a excellent, fabulous time. I think we'll do one last test. To see Round one, fight! So I'm just going to be blocking, this guy's going to come up and do some punches. So he's still, his head's still moving back, as is the, as is the tradition, but he's taking reduced damage. You can of course adjust this as you see fit. Okay, that one looks like it's still doing quite a bit of damage. So this is why we do a little bit of a beta test, friends. So we can go to our, we can go to our, that's our R1, which is our heavy punch. I'm going to go to block. Whoopsie. I'm going to go to our block damage reducer. I'm going to go to punches, heavy punch. Alrighty. And as you can see here, I forgot to do this one. So that's why it's important to do a little bit of a beta test. We can make this one do, let's say, five damage. Alrighty, let's continue along with our test to see that all our attacks are working. Round one, important step. fight! So now I'm blocking, heavy punch, Gush. fabulous, so he still gets hit, he does like a nice semi animation which is quite nice, kick, he gets hit, looks like with kick he's actually also still taking damage, KO, and these ones as well. So we must just go with our block damage reducer and go to our various kicks. Didn't do these very well apparently. Alrighty. Reduce that. Alrighty. Medium kick. Reduce that. Heavy kick. Reduce that. 
always good to double check friends because sometimes you think you're like oh, I've absolutely done this but then maybe you might have missed one or two things all right rid of this dude round always, one always beta test fight or alpha test or just test if you don't want to be fancy that looks like it's working alrighty and if we do a throw So, okay, the throw should maybe actually also disable the block, so. Alright, that's actually something quite cool. This is another reason why we test. So, I'm going to go hit reactions. When grabbed by player one has been detected, or uh, any of these really, I think what we'll do is we'll disable block. So, I'm just going to put in a little keyframe that both these can be connected to, and that's going to disable block. For the duration or maybe maybe let's put in a little timeline and in this timeline i'm going to put a keyframe and it's going to be okay let's say the keyframe is one second or however long that particular thing is um not i can't remember how long it is we can check that if need be and we'll disable block so this way when you're being thrown you won't be able to block and now we can actually quickly check um the throw we'll see how long is throw we'll just reduce the size of it throw animation is three seconds okay cool so we will not be able to block for let's say like just about three seconds alrighty thereabouts Okay, sweet. And this one is going to play in either case. Okay, sweet. Let's go for it. Round one. Fight! And punch, punch, punch. Ta 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 so I can definitely smoothen out that throw animation with that stuff we can do in the finishing touches video. And then I think the last round thing one test fight is of course just the old fireball. That still works. Okay, cool. Friends, there you are. So there was a little bit of testing going on, a little bit of uh, experimentation. Uh, but to just recap, we added in a crouch, uh, or rather a crouch block. We added in a normal block. Um, with uh, the use of these AND gates, we're able to distinguish between two kinds of blocks. So you'll be able to block while standing and while crouching. We also immobilize the person while they are blocking. We add in a block tag, which when detected will reduce the damage of all of our, all of our various attacks. Um, to reduce the damage of the fireball, remember that you need a value slider. And to set uh, any sort of emitted object to emit with wires, and then that'll work. And we did a few other tweaks along the way. But friends, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please let me know with a like and perchance a subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I really do enjoy the feedback and I try to answer all the comments that you guys leave. So, friends, thank you so much for sticking around and I shall catch you for the next one. Peace out.